Welcome back guys, it's the Tightwad and baby name nursery signs are trending and have been for about two years. And most of them are on round wooden signs. So I'm gonna show you today how you can cut these nice round wooden signs with a simple jig and a router. I have these pallet boards connected to some plywood and it's already around, but it had some issues on the edge. So I'm actually cutting a smaller one today. This is a 20 inch round originally. It's gonna be an 18 inch round for this customer. And I'm gonna show you what I do to cut circles out of plywood or to make signs for people. So I've already got a hole in the center of this since I previously cut it, but I'm gonna show you how it all works. I use this styrofoam. This is found in the insulation section of your big box stores. And I always use it whenever I'm rip cutting with a circular saw or whenever I'm cutting circles with my router. And today we are using a router. So if you have a router, you can do the same thing. And today we're also using a jig that I purchased. This is not a sponsored video in any way. Uh, everything you're gonna see today, I purchased except for this one mask that they've given me for trying out. So I did wanna clarify that before we get started. I'm gonna get out the accessories that I need here. So the things we're going to be using today are a uh, straight down cut bit. Um, I have some fluted ones as well that I use sometimes. So this is the called the Miles Craft um, Turn Lock Quick Circle Guide Kit. And the way it works is this piece goes into here. And tightens down. You have measurements on the side here to determine how big you want it. I'll unscrew this to show you, you have inside and outside of the cut. So I want the inside diameter here to be 18. And what this is doing is this accounting for the size of the bit. So I put that inside line right there on the 18 and now I'm gonna get an 18 inch circle. It's gonna run off of this little piece right here. And this little piece goes into the center hole for your circle. If you didn't already have the center hole, you would just simply measure out um, here I would measure nine and a half inches from one side of the plywood, nine and a half from the other, because my diameter is gonna be an 18 inch. And I always leave a half inch on the sides to make sure I have enough clearance. So I'm just gonna tighten this screw down here to hold this into place. And the Milescraft jig does come with a little bit, uh, small drill bit to use to drill the hole there. It comes with some other things that help you center your bits and things whenever you're first setting up the jig. But I have the DeWalt uh, router I have the set that has the both the fixed and the plunge base. So I leave my fixed base in my router table. I'm going to be using the plunge base today. So I've got to get my router out and put in here, but it would be easier to show you this part without uh, doing that. So this just comes in here. There's some arrows that line up. So you just stick it in here and rotate it till it locks into place. And then when you're ready to pull it off, there's a trigger here to release and pull it out. So super easy setup with that. And the way this part works is there's a little hole in this piece right here. And the little hole here goes on top of this so that it keeps the router bit equidistant from this at all times and makes your circle. So I'm going to get that hole lined up here and I'm gonna grab my router. The next thing I need to do on my router is set the depth here. I'm gonna release this. And I like to push it all the way down to the wood and then adjust over here on the side. And I try to plunge about a quarter inch at a time and there's some steps on this router bit that make that possible. So I'm gonna release that and get it ready here. And now we're ready to set everything up. So I have my cord here and when you're going around and around in circles, it tends to get tangled up. So I've put a hook in the ceiling right here that I run the extension cord through so that it holds the cord out of the way. So you can see how this system works. The extension cord came up here, plugged into the router cord, and I can adjust the slack as needed. And then it's gonna hold that cord out of the way as I spin around in circles. I'm gonna be putting on my PPE now, so it's gonna be a little bit harder to hear me. But basically, I'm just going to be going counterclockwise around this piece. I do need to clamp it down to make sure it holds firmly into place as I'm cutting. And I'm gonna start just past my clamp here. I always use two clamps so that I can remove one at a time while I'm spinning the router around. So we are ready to go. I'm going to get this put on. This is a dust mask that I'm trying out right now. It's made by Trend 
and it is called the, I think this is the Stealth Light. Uh, I'm going to be getting their regular Stealth as well, but I like this one so far. It's a little bit harder to put on than this mask. I like this one because it just, I can just hang it on my head and then clip it in. This is one by 3M. I'll make sure both of them are linked in the description and in the pinned comment. But this one, I've got to pull these straps over my head first and then adjust them. So it takes a little bit longer to get on than I like these Ubex goggles. Uh, they're better than the DeWalt ones. They have a nice little uh, piece right here. I'll link these in the description pin comment. And then these are awesome as well, the 3M Bluetooth headphones. So one thing about this jig is I do need to keep some pressure on the back side so it doesn't pop up and turn the router this way. So you can see it cuts a nice perfect circle here. I'm gonna run the sander over this um, to clean it up a little bit. And then I'll be putting a baby name on it. But everything looks good. There is a little bit of tear out around the sides here. Nothing a little sanding won't take care of, uh, but it does a really good job and makes it super easy to cut around. I really like that Milescraft jig again. I paid in full for it. I'm not sponsored by them, but I always like to promote products that I use and love. To give it a more consistent look, I'm gonna use this uh, Weatherwood Accelerator by Rust-Oleum. There's several different products that do the same thing. Just gives the wood a little bit of a gray tint. Supposedly it reacts with the tannins in the wood and that's what causes the tint, but I'll just brush it on and let it sit until it dries. This also helps the sides blend where the seams are. You can see it's already starting to gray. It's gonna get grayer and grayer as it goes. So this paper that I'm using is just resin paper. You can buy it at Home Depot or Lowe's. I buy the kind that fits my table. Uh, so I just, it comes on a roll. I just cut off sheets. I use these cheap paint brushes from uh, Harbor Freight to paint this stuff on. I'll just go rinse it off and I'll hang it back up. And uh, since this stuff is completely water-based, it's very easy to clean up and to rinse out of your brushes and it doesn't mess them up over time. So we're gonna let this sit and dry overnight, come back and give it a light sanding and then I'll put the name on it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this palm router. It's a little rigid handheld cordless palm router. And I'm going to be cutting a keyhole slot in the back. You can see the profile of the bit here. And this allows the piece to hang flush against the wall instead of having hardware sticking off the back and then a screw. Uh, sometimes your piece could be a quarter inch out from the wall. And I just like the way it looks uh, whenever it's sitting flush on the wall. So I have my marks here for the right side and left side and then the center. And I'm going to make a plunge cut with this, even though it's not a plunge router. So I'll hold it straight up and down and push it down into the wood and slide it down and then pull it back out. And I love these tiny little sanders from Gator Finishing. I'll make sure I link that in the description and in the pinned comment. They make quick work of small sanding tasks. So that's what it looks like. It got a little bit squirrely there on the front end because the router slipped. It's always hard making a, a plunge cut with a fixed base router, uh, but it looks fine and it'll never be seen when it's hanging on the wall. So last thing I have to do is clean off the back of this and then I'm gonna be able to put the name on it.
got my branding iron really hot and I've seen that if you spray water on the surface prior to branding, it uh, prevents some of the burn out on the edges. So we're gonna test that out today. see I uh, burned in the name of my woodworking business, Benton Art. I'll take a sander and it'll clean up. It did prevent a lot of the burning around the edges here. So I'll give it a quick sand after it completely dries and it'll reveal just the logo nice and clean. That wetting it technique works really well. Typically I'd have to sand a lot more down. So I have a nice indention still from my logo. Now I have to place the name and I'll probably glue the first name on first and then the middle name is Joe so I don't know if it's going to go here or over here and that's where I get my wife involved I'll glue this down and then let her see the different options for this and let her place it here's a nice look at the finished product my customer was extremely happy with this she actually went home and made her husband hang it that same day and so it's now hanging in the baby room waiting on the baby to be born if you found this video helpful i'd appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i do a lot of woodworking and other diy style things around my home leave any questions you have in the comment section below and i'll be sure to respond and as always i hope you guys have a great day